Fierce storms whipped through the metro last night, putting a halt to 4th of July plans. Now, during a time when the National Weather Service needed to alert people the most, Twitter restricted communication. And Denver 7's Megan Lopez takes a closer look at what happened and why tweet limits could be concerning for important information getting out to the public. It's a sound that's become synonymous with information a sound that connects communities instantaneously. It has been that place that we could go to for live coverage of all of the things. But this week, Twitter owner Elon Musk announced the social media platform will start limiting the number of tweets people can see per day. 800 for unverified users, meaning those who don't pay, and 10,000 for those who do. Musk said the goal was to stop companies from using AI to mine data from the social media platform. But this limit comes the same week much of Colorado is experiencing another round of severe weather. It's been active uh, and really we don't see it slowing down. Greg Hevener from the National Weather Service in Boulder says they use Twitter to get information out quickly about storms, but also to gather information from people on the ground. So social media is a big part of what we do. We're able to you know, change the wording in our warning, say either it's been verified, we have you know this size diameter hail falling or a confirmed tornado has been spotted in this area moving this direction. It really helps to fortify our decision making process in terms of whether we are issuing warnings or if we have issued warnings, kind of helping to beef up the wording. But during Tuesday's storms, NWS Boulder sent out this saying they've reached their limit for tweets they could see in a day and another saying they're finding workarounds. It kind of just limited the amount of information we could see via Twitter. It by no means did it affect our overall mission. Warnings and watches are still going out. Still, Dr. Samuel J from MSU Denver's communication studies program says for organizations that rely on Twitter's quick communications like police agencies, tweet limits can pose a problem. I do think that it it offered a lot of really, really valuable um, resources for or resource for folks. And uh, I'm just concerned with what's going to happen now. And asking people to pay to keep up to date with important information can be disenfranchising. Denver 7 reached out to Twitter's media relations team for comment. We were sent back an automated reply with a poop emoji. We also reached out to Elon Musk and Twitter on the social media platform, but didn't hear back. So for now, Dr. J says it's important for people to remember. It just goes to show that uh, companies like Twitter or Facebook or Meta uh, that we lean on for so much of our life, especially news gathering, they aren't necessarily there for that. They're there to kind of keep us engaged. And as long as these Twitter limits are in place, you might need to start looking for your instant information elsewhere. Megan Lopez, Denver 7. What an immature response. Well, amid growing frustrations with Twitter, people will soon have a new alternative. Meta, the owner of Facebook and Instagram, announced a new app called Threads. The app appeared in the Apple App Store today and is available for download. It describes a Twitter-like setup with an emphasis on creating conversations. It connects to people's Instagram accounts, creating a seamless user experience between the two. For more context on the power social media sites have, a federal judge blocked the Biden administration from communicating with such companies. U.S. District Judge Terry Doty, appointed by former Bre President Trump, ordered that government officials and agencies can't ask companies to take down content. Companies include Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and others. The government can still contact the social media giants to address national security threats.